What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for some more content for you guys. And as it's international break, it forces us to get a bit more creative with our content. It's not exactly content revolving game week after game week. So we thought we would react to some more clips, seeing as it was well received the last couple of times. We've got no Judas clips in there for you this time, but, <laughs> None of those um, revelations, but I actually don't know what you've chosen. So I'm quite excited to see what well, uh, we're going to be reacting to. Some of the comments are from the window, transfer window after we didn't sign any one oh, and great. uh just looking at the squad and uh, there's a few comments that i've picked out which i think are quite interesting and uh, very relevant to now and um me versus john in a harry winks debate oh, we've all reacting to them well, you never know <laughs> you never know that could come out on top you never know um so let's uh, go into these it's about yeah got about five minutes worth of comments to look through let's uh pl start watching and see what we think all right you have you say Jan, toby and sanchez that's one of the best in the league yeah in terms of if not the, it's yeah. not the. No one, you can't tell me three centre backs together better than that. Depth is lacking. That's one thing. I you think, think so? so. Carter Vickers and Foyth is back up coming in. I mean, I like the look of Foyth from last season. So do I. If we're planning to play two at the back, is the depth enough then? If we're planning to play two at the back, then maybe. But three at the back, no. Um, Carter Vickers, I've never been impressed with him. And also Dyer can drop back in three That's at the back. True. Dyer can drop back. Okay. If, if need be, I've never been impressed with Carter Vickers or in a Spurs shirt. We're really lacking depth. Still at Spurs, well. Carter Vickers. Sorry? Carter Vickers is still at Spurs. Yeah, he is. Somehow. <laughs> I don't, they're still not impressed with him three years later. But it's just like, I'll just get the interesting part. One sec. Like we said, Dyer, if we're playing a back three, Dyer can drop back. So it's not too bad. Um, um, we'll see. I, th I don't know. I, th I think I, I think we could have done with maybe another centre back. We've also got Sissoko as well. Who well, that's what I've said about comments. It's just interesting to note that since then, not have, we've only we've only signed Joe Roden as a centre back since then. Jan Vertonghen's left. Dyer has dropped back, and he hasn't exactly pulled up. He's any dropped trees. back and then dropped out. But it's just funny. This is three years ago, and we were saying the depth isn't good enough, and we haven't signed anyone really That's since exactly then. Exactly what I've been saying um, ever since the uh, you know all this kind of negative light has been cast over Spurs this season. We have not upgraded our defence since we signed Toby Alderweireld. Yes, we've signed Sanchez and Joe Roden since then, but we haven't upgraded the defence since then. Yeah, we haven't, and like. It's just weird. Like we we've been there. It's been three years since that point where we're saying the depth isn't good enough for centre back, mm. and still in three years, not only have we not signed anyone, but we've let Foyth and Van and Vertong go, and we've got no one really in. We've got Dyer dropping back in, and we got and Sanchez has kind of declined even since then, <laughs> and we've got Joe Roden. So like. We really need to some serious investment in that area of the oh, pitch. Sure. And it's unbe like, it. unbelievable. We've needed it for a long time. But yeah. my Yes, we have needed <laughs> it for a long time, as you can see. <laughs> and but my biggest takeaway from this is how how um how young you look in that video. Yeah, I mean lockdown. Right, yeah, what has happened to you? Lockdown hasn't been too kind to me, I don't think. But it's just lockdown things. I and think all, we're all going through the same thing not, in lockdown. Not only that is how much our the quality of our videos have improved as well. The audio on this is terrible. Oh, I know, it's not nice to listen it's to. Terrible. It. I can't even listen to it. <laughs> big up Frank for that, by the yeah, way. Big, big up, up yourself, Frank. Big up Frank. But it's just right, I just thought those those comments that we made three years ago, very poignant still. I mean, look, you could replay that, upload it as a video today, and it'll still be exactly the same. Exactly relevant. the same, pretty much. Not, not, not much in it. Um, and then we go on to talk about some other players. Can play in there. And also, when Sissoko's played centre mid, I, I think he's been good. I think he's been rubbish when he's played out the wing in the attack. I think formations. you can't play Sissoko in a two man field, you have to play him in a three. Because I think... he, he's not good enough on the ball mm. to be a passer. You say you say we can't play Sissoko in a two-man midfield. We got to a Champions League final yeah, with Sissoko right. in a two-man midfield. We lucked in Sissoko in a two-man midfield. Um, I still think that's true. I mean, yeah, we did get to a Champions League final, but look, listen, listen on, because I think I make some good points. Yeah, you can't you can't dictate a game. You can't control the midfield like someone like Dembele or Winks can. So I wouldn't. Or Winks. The thing is with Sissoko, you can't put him next to a defensive midfielder because then you have no ball player. But you can't put him next to a ball player because he's not defensive enough either. So that's why you have to play him in the three. That's uh, that. Yeah, that's I agree with that. Sissoko. Thing from now. And yes, yeah, so that's uh, we got that. So we c you can't play Sissoko with a ball player. You can't play Sissoko with anyone in a two-man midfield. Mm -hmm. He can't. <laughs> the way you say uh, you can't control the midfield like, like Winks. Not like Winks. <laughs> not like good old Winks. He can control the midfield. But I think it's so true with Sissoko. Even now, I think we, we've seen that. We've seen these problems with him that he, there's no we, in a two-man midfield. 
when we partner with Hoybier, we're like too defensive. We've got no creativity. And then we t- when we partner with Ndombele, we've got no, not enough solidity um, at the back. And that's very, very true even now. And I think that's the tr- struggle with Soko fitting him in. Mm. I, I just think in that double pivot, Reno said that pretty much was when he first came in. He doesn't like Re- uh, Soko in that centre mid. Yeah. And he's kind of been forced to play him there. I think, yeah, he only plays there as a kind of last resort now. Um, well, he wasn't in the beginning of the season. He was kind of, when we, we were beating City and them, we, we were, uh, he was playing there but and it was quite working quite well for us at that time yeah because we were very defensive and yeah. it kind of worked that yeah. being that defensive but we had no quality and it, if you're playing a low block i guess it works but yeah if but you're trying unstuck. to pay possession football trying to go at teams then no chance yeah exactly and that was the problem we had but i just think yeah i think we got it we were getting it spot on pretty much three years three years ago and our try and our transfer into analysis when we didn't sign anyone and i think a lot of the problems then we still have and that is what we keep saying we have a lot of these problems stemming from a long time ago pre Mourinho, back end of pochettino era and even mid, shows mid end of pochettino era yeah i mean that was his penultimate season so well, see, yeah but the, right these, these problems season, predate that season though yeah exactly so yeah so it's just interesting i think looking at back to that um all right now this is me versus john in a harry winks today <laughs> uh, this was like a couple of months into lockdown so it's still looking okay um but let's uh, see what we had to say there's a reason why we call him spongebob square pass okay he's very technically uh sound he's very he's, he's very technical he's good with his feet but the guy offers nothing okay he's uh, very defensively minded to the point where it's overly cautious and actually gets us in trouble because he's unable to break the lines it actually contains the play and gets us stuck in around our own area and ends up going back to larice rush kick forwards and we end up sitting deeper and deeper as a result of that. I think he's good. I think he's loyal. He's enthusiastic, but he's not quite good enough to be in the first team. I think he's just, uh, he's too much of a crab. You know, I actually think he's a poor man, Scott Parker. I think he does everything Scott Parker did, but, but doesn't, uh, doesn't actually get a uh, tackle properly. I think when he does try and tackle, he gets yellow cards. He, he's, he's a bit reckless. Um, he doesn't have a forward pass in him. And you need that from a player that's just sitting in front of the back four. You need a player that can actually Look drive the ball forward. He head. cannot do that. He is the poor man, Scott Parker. Wow. Harry Winks is one of the most underappreciated midfielders in the Premier League right now, but judging by what I just heard. This is a guy who's able to get on the ball, control. he can control the game with just his passing. He, if you look at the stats, he actually is um, one of the top uh, centre mids for penetrative passes going forward. He passes way more forward than you like to think. His dribbling is absolutely fantastic. He's very hard to um, get the ball off once once he gets going. He's proven in games like against Real Madrid, against uh, other top teams, he can um, uh, he can go toe to toe with the best of best players. What's held him back really is injuries. He's he's had big injury problems with his ankles, but he's he's been able to overcome that. He's played for England. He got man of the match on his debut. Um, he's a central midfield. Not every centre mid has to be a goal scoring midfielder uh, getting shots off all the time and being able to score goals look at Andres Iniesta he, he never barely got a goal in assist a sister season and he was known as one of the best centre mids in Europe I'm not obviously saying Harry Winks is no Iniesta but I'm saying you can have a role in centre mid without being able to contribute goals and assists and he um, very clearly is able to contribute to the football that we play and and you you say stats lie John but past completion rate not is lie. what I'm talking not about lie. I didn't they're, say they're lie. all misleading uh, I don't think those comments age well. I was going to say the I least. I think you got to say John was absolutely spot on. To be honest, John well, was spot on in this one. You have to say the end, the back end of last season. Um, I think Winks did did play quite well, especially after lockdown. I thought he started most of the games and he was actually quite good. And that was when, I guess, actually, I don't know if that was when uh, when we were having this debate or not. But I thought he was quite good at the back end of last season. I thought he was going to prove his worth, but this season. I have to admit, he's been an absolute dumpster fire, pretty much. He's been, he's, his attitude has stunk. Um, I've been really, I've, I've, look, he's let me down, Harry Winks. But look, he's even when Harry Winks, when you're saying he was good at the back end of last season, it still wasn't good enough to, to for what we want to achieve. Um, yeah, look, I want to, obviously he needs to be better than that. But I thought, look, I think there have, there have been games where Winks has done a good job. Games. I think, yeah, there have been yeah, games. Yeah, of course there has been. There have been There's games. There's also been games where Moose Soko looks brilliant as well. Um, there's been games when every player looks good. I mean, every bad player has a, g- a good game time and time again. No, but I think he's gone through periods where he's been consistently good and playing well. And I think when I think when he's confident, winks, and when and when he's part of the team where uh, he feels like 
like he's in that team week in week out and he's getting his f- first foot on the front foot on the ball and he's looking forward all the time and he's and he sometimes you you can see of Winks when he's confident he's dribbling past people and he's taking that first touch into space and stuff like that he can be a good player but when he's off form and I think he's pretty much been off form for most of this season he really does turn into a proper proper average footballer because when he's not on top of all these little things it's the little things that we can make Winks good basically is what I'm saying and when he's not adding those little things to this game he does turn really really average because he doesn't have the physicality and the special qualities of other players and he has to work a bit harder to to to, have, to get that extra edge and I feel like this season he hasn't been doing that and I think yeah John um, in high low in hindsight he's definitely been spot on in a lot of the stuff he said but I still think um, Winks can be a good player but it's hard to back him up when he's playing in the performances he has him, been I can see him being a good like average well good like Premier League player for like maybe a team in like eighth or below kind of thing maybe he'll fit in well to an Arsenal team or something like that you know what I mean uh, mid-table fodder um, but I just can't see him being a regular um, starter for any decent side, maybe Europa League or above even. And I think that's right. And I think when we talk about a player's mentality, that has to come into it when it comes to judging them as a top-level player. And you've got to say, if you don't, if he doesn't have the mentality to fight for his spot and get winners placed back into the first team and always be depressed and thinking about wanting to leave because he's not getting the game time and stuff like that, then yeah, that must play into how good he is and whether he because when you're into when you're in a squad where you have to be challenging for top four and stuff and you have to class yourself as good enough, you have to be able to deal with setbacks and deal with that and try and win win your place back in the team. And I think I just felt also he got a bit too big for his boots at one stage. Uh, There was murmurings coming out when he was under Pochettino and how how he wasn't happy then uh, for lack of playing time. Again, under Jose Mourinho this season, talking about how he'd rather get into the England... I mean, not rather, but he wants to play for Tottenham so he can get into the England side, you know what I mean? Um, So I, I just think he's felt... I felt like he's just got a bit too big for his boots and I think, for me, time to move him on this summer. Well, let's listen to the rest of this clip. This is yeah. penetrative forward passes between defenders. This is what the stat I'm talking about. The player who's actually top um, of the league is uh, Kovacic, and second is Ndombele for, 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 the, for this in, in terms of penetrative passes per game. The player who is seventh is Harry Winks. Harry Winks plays more forward passes than you'd like to think. No. He does. The stats no. back it up. No, he plays no, forward no. passes, whether you like it or not. The stats Look, there's a dif- back yeah, but there's a difference point. between like he there's a difference between forward yeah, but in it also, between it, defenders in no, between. No, I don't. I, I don't think you can. No, I don't think you, don't, don't think there's a metric for that. No, I don't think there's there a is. metric for that. There is a metric you, no. for that. It's called. No, I don't think. Parties. I think people, people Media in the comment section, uh, you're, 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 um, you're uh, selling the the audience short when you say that because everyone can see with their own eyes what's going on with Harry Winks. You people say I'm know, saying I'll just read it. And it's the stats. This is, this is these are not disputable. You know, there's a, there's such thing as a forward pass and there's a forward pass that breaks the lines. And yes, that's what he can't yes, do. yes, no. there is, John. And I'm talking about forward <laughs> passes that break the line. No, 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 no that's no. exactly what we're I'm not, talking not, about. Don't, please don't belittle the audience. We can see with our own eyes. We know what Harry Winks does on the ball, and we know he doesn't go forward. I'm oh, telling you. Let's look at the comment yourself. section. Let's let the audience the decide. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, but I being, mean, being seventh in that is not even that good, is it? It's just, uh, look, it's it's when you're seventh in that. Uh, it, it's not obviously the best, but it's it's not the worst. And we're average. comparing it to someone like Undombele, who probably had about a quarter of the minutes. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think it was well. Well, it wasn't total. It was like per 90. So Undombele oh, was I a see. lot higher per 90 than Winks. But yeah, you're right. Seventh probably is not even that great anyway, yeah. even when you're thinking about that. And I think I think John might be, have a case here because I think when you talk about penetrative passes, um, there can be a penetrative pass not into space and there can be one where you've got to, got to play on the front foot and maybe those stats can be a bit misleading when Winks might be playing a pass which beats a player but it's not actually a threatening pass whereas other players like Ndombele we've seen it so many times how many yeah. times he breaks the line and yeah. it's actually a good pass in a threatening area yeah. and I think maybe he's right and I think I have to concede on this one where I think I have to I have to say Winks definitely this season has impressed me especially since I was backing him up and although I do still back my belief that there is a player in there I think his mentality is in the gutter at the moment and he's to shape up if he wants to win his place back in back anywhere near the first team at the moment well John if you're watching, 
not many times Simeon admits defeat. So I'm pretty stubborn. So, 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 so take it, take it as a win this time. So look, there you have it. Uh, we got any more clips? No, that's it. That is it. So um, if you like this type of content and want us to keep producing these kind of old reaction videos to old videos, because um, you know. We, me and my brother have probably come out with some right belters over the past. Yeah, look, if there's anything... Uh, good and bad, to be honest. Is there anything that you that uh, you want us to react to and you think uh, of any of our old content, just tag us or show us on social media anything you'd like, timestamp anything and DM us and we'll react to it for sure. All right, so there you have it. Let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on, you Spurs. spurs.